When you tend to think of classic Cadillacs, you may think of beautiful vehicles inside and out and cars that really were quite opulent and in some cases even ostentatious. However, not all Cadillacs really fulfilled this type of mission and certainly didn't conjure up that image in the hearts and minds of their customers or the overall general buying public. One such example might be the 1982 to 1988 Cimarron, which, though when it was introduced in 1982, wasn't really a great vehicle. By the time the car had departed this mortal coil in 1988, it actually was a pretty decent and fun-to-drive car and also was relatively good-looking. However, in the history of Cadillac, there was another nameplate that also was synonymous with value beyond the Cimarron. And no, I'm not referring to the Katera or the Caddy that zigs. I am referring to the 1965 to 1976 Cadillac Calais. Cadillac introduced the Calais for the 1965 model year, and you can see here a picture of one. It really was a DeVille in many respects. It rode atop the same 129.5 inch wheelbase, had the same Cadillac source 429 cubic inch engine underhood, making 340 horsepower. But the base price of the Calais was about $5,200 for the hardtop sedan and $5,000 for the hardtop coupe. This compared to $5,600, $5,700 for the hardtop sedan DeVille and $5,400 for the hardtop coupe DeVille. So the Calais was roughly $400 cheaper or about 8% cheaper than the DeVille series vehicles. Now, why in the world would Cadillac do something like this? It's not quite clear, but my guess is that they wanted to try to drive some incremental volume or at least have an entry-level price point to advertise for dealers to get customers into the showroom. In any case, that's never a great sign for a luxury make when you're trying to move down market to get more buyers and make your brand less exclusive. But that's really what Cadillac was trying to do. And this was the start of Cadillac really trying to lean in to be a more volume-based player. And they would do so, and frankly, they do so very successfully into the 1970s. For 1965, the first year of the Calais, it was relatively successful from a sales standpoint and sold about 35,000 units that year. Now, that pales in comparison to the DeVille sales for that year, which really were about 130,000, 140,000 units. So the Calais wasn't really a volume player, but as I mentioned, it perhaps got customers into the showroom to buy a DeVille or maybe an El Dorado or maybe even a Fleetwood 60 Special. While it initially proved to be somewhat popular, as I mentioned in its first year, the Calais sold about 33,000, 34,000 units. By 1976, in its final year, it really was not very popular in the Cadillac lineup at all. It sold just about 6,200 units in 1976, compared with the DeVille series in 1976, which sold about 180,000 units, and hence why it was likely discontinued. By that point in 1976, the Calais had a base price of about $8,600 in coupe form and $8,800 in four-door hardtop sedan form. The DeVille, again, was about $400 more expensive for either the coupe or hardtop. So that price differential had remained, and yet the Calais just wasn't taking many buyers. We're going to focus here on the 1975 Calais because it was the penultimate year. It was really waning in sales popularity across coupe and hardtop sedan sales for the Calais in 1975. Only 8,300 units were moved in that year, so really just was kind of pitiful sales volumes. But the cool thing about the 1975 Calais is that it came with some awesome fabrics, and that's why we're going to focus on it. 1975 in general was a crazy year for Cadillac interiors. I'm not quite sure what the interior designers were thinking, but they went overboard in this year, in 1975 in particular, and I think somebody told them to tone it down for 1976. Take a look here at the Calais interior for 1975. You have to love this cool so-called Morgan plaid interior where the plaid fabric not only adorns the seats as well as the armrests, but also the door panels. This was a fabric that was exclusive to the Calais in 1975, and is pretty gosh darn wonky. 
And as the brochure says, this Morgan plaid is shown in dark blue, but it was also available in crimson and black. You could get an all vinyl interior in your 1975 Calais, but that was just rather bland. Why wouldn't you get the Morgan cloth? Now, as I mentioned, there were some crazy, funky interiors in 1975 Cadillacs. Take a look at this green DeVille interior. So this was one up from the Calais series, and it's Maharaja cloth. Again, a overall funky pattern. And last but not least, we have the interior of the 1975 Fleetwood Brougham shown in Monticello cloth. I think that this is the most over-the-top cloth pattern ever put in a Cadillac. I have never seen something like this before or since. And it's a one-year-only upholstery. So the Calais plaid interior, by comparison, was rather muted, but still pretty cool. Now, by 1975, when you ordered your Calais from the dealership, you got many similar things that you could get on the DeVille series. As I mentioned before, the cars were largely the same in terms of their body and their chassis. By this point, the Calais was riding atop a 130-inch wheelbase. It was a 5,000-plus pound car, as was the DeVille. But there were some different features on the Calais versus the DeVille series because, of course, Cadillac had to save money to pay for that $400 difference in base price. One area where it saved money was not under hood, where both of these vehicles, the DeVille and the Calais, carried the 500 cubic inch Cadillac V8 under hood, which by this point was making all of 190 horsepower. It was down from 400 gross horsepower in 1970, probably something around 275 net horsepower to now down to 190 net horsepower. So pretty pathetic. But despite sharing engines, there were some interior pieces of trim that were different aside from the cloth. One element that I'm not quite sure if you can pick up on in this photo, but it's definitely there, is that the Calais did not have pocket lamps in the doors like the DeVilles and Fleetwoods and Eldorados did. You'll notice that the door panel still has a provision for it, but as opposed to having one white lens and one red lens like the DeVille and the Eldorados and the Fleetwood Bromes have on the interiors in 1975, notice that there are two red lenses here on the Calais, and that's because there simply aren't lights behind these lenses. So Cadillac took out the lights in the door panel if you ordered the Calais. I think that's pretty humorous. They couldn't give that to you in a car that at the time had a base price of about $8,200, which today would be probably about $50,000, $55,000. But couldn't get lights in your door panels if you got a Calais. Another thing that you didn't get if you got the Calais on the interior trim was that the accelerator and brake pedal, which were normally trimmed with stainless steel around the edges, well, on the Calais, that stainless steel trim around the pedals is gone. So Cadillac saved a few bucks there, and it looks kind of strange when you're familiar with the DeVille, Eldorado, and the Fleetwood Brome accelerator and brake pedals, but again, Cadillac felt the need to do this. One good thing I will say about the Calais series Cadillacs is that if you're a fan of Cadillacs without vinyl roofs, you're more apt to find a Calais without a vinyl roof than a DeVille or Eldorado. And there's actually a decent number of Calais vehicles without that vinyl roof. I've come close to buying a couple because I love, in particular, the 1971-3 to exterior styling but I really don't care for the vinyl roof that adorns many of them. Some of the Calais buyers, as I mentioned, were just less apt to opt for a vinyl top. And consequently, you find some vehicles that look absolutely great. Years ago, there was an all-black, I think, 1971 Cadillac Calais without a vinyl top, and it just looked stunning. Unfortunately, I missed out on it. But, oh well, you can't win them all. Hope you enjoyed this spotlight on the 1975 Cadillac Calais. If you did, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and check out the video thumbnails at bottom left and right for some suggestions for you.